Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I'm going to talk to you about tips to help your tomato plants survive high temperatures. When your temperatures start getting into the mid-90s, 95, 100 degrees, and your heat index is 100, 110. That's what's going to be happening here in Maryland Zone 7 over the next five or six days. First thing I want to talk about is what happens when the high heat starts coming, when it gets to 95 degrees and it sticks around you know, for four, four, five, six days, a couple of weeks. Your tomato goes into survival mode. It's a subtropical plant. It likes the heat, but not that high. So when it starts getting hot, you may see your flowers dropping off. You may see fruit dropping off. That's perfectly normal. It's not a disease. It's a response to the heat. They're trying to survive. If you take a look at this plant, what do you think's going on? Well, I forgot to water it. So watering is going to be 10 times more important when the temperatures go from 85, 90 to 95 to 100. You think it's only 5 or 10 degrees, but these plants can dry out in half of a day. So we'll get to watering in a second. I'm going to show you how to make sure you're getting one to two inches of water in your garden on your tomato plants. I'll show you a trick. But I also want to show you something else that happens. So you may get flower drop. And you can see all the tomatoes are nice and green, lots of flowers, but now with this week of heat coming, there might be an issue with the uh, fruit not setting. If you see your leaves curling, that's a physiological response. There's no disease. There's nothing for you to worry about. And I'm going to point out different physiological responses to the heat as we go along. So you're not worrying about, do my tomato plants have a disease or an infestation? So. You've been watering regularly, taking care of your plants, now you got the heat coming in. In some zones, I understand, you may have four weeks, five weeks of 95, 100 degree, 110 degree temperature. These tips will help a little bit with that, but this is more geared for kind of the Maryland Zone 7 area, where you'll get a week of heat, a little bit of a break, the heat comes back. Watering. So as soon as that heat's coming, check your, uh, probably weather.com's easiest, look for a 10-day forecast and see what's going on. You want to start watering your plants even more often, common sense, when the heat comes because they're going to dry out really quick. And if this dries out, say, for two days, then you come back and you water it a whole lot, that's what often causes fruit cracking. And it can also cause blossom end rot. When the water issues start getting messed up, your plants can get physiological issues, cracking fruit, blossom end rot. So, heat's rolling in. You want to make sure you're giving each general plant area one to two inches of water. We'll talk more about watering as I move down my garden. All hoses are different. So, of course, you want to water, but how long do you hold the hose there? Easiest way to do it is to get a container that's about a square foot at the bottom. Um, visually figure out where an inch is or two inches are or mark it. I have a video on that which I will link. And you just put on the hose. I don't want the lens to get wet. And you start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, you get the point, and then you look to see how long it takes for an inch of water to form, and then you just repeat that in your garden. So you want to give these guys a good inch or two of water, and you would just count one, two, three, four, five, however long it takes for your hose to put out about an inch or two of water, and you would go in and water all your plants. You're going to want to water at least every other day, um, and again, it's just stressing consistent water. You don't want to let it go three, four days and then give it a ton of water. You will see your fruit crack and it will possibly cause blossom end rot. Nice consistent watering. More vigilantly, of course, when the heat comes. Kind of common sense. This is shade cloth. This is a 40% shade cloth, which means it blocks out 40% of the sun. And you can sort of see my hand through there. You can get 40%, 50%, 60%, 70% shade cloth. If you're in hotter zones in Maryland Zone 7, you're going to want to use this um, probably during that whole period when it gets hot. And you're basically going to put it over the tomatoes. It's going to shade them off. And I'm going to set that up and show you how to do that. And it's not rocket science. This is 10 feet long, 6 feet wide. If I'm putting it in, say, the bed right over there, that's a 4 foot wide, 8 foot wide bed, I would just put up some posts put the shade cloth over it. I could go ahead and just run it over the stakes of this hedge and then just put smaller posts out here, but you're just creating shade. Also when the heat comes, you may see your plant start to do this, especially when your plant is producing heavily. I've already harvested a lot off of this tomato plant 
and you see some of the leaves are dying back, that can come with the heat too. Different varieties may start losing leaves and the pattern is usually a yellowing. No brown spots, nothing that looks like disease. The leaves are just going to die out. That's perfectly normal. Don't panic. The heat is coming. All the tomatoes in there are ripening. The other thing you want to do is go and pick all your fruits. So I'm going to harvest everything that's in my garden just about, except for plants I need to shoot videos on. And you want to remove all the ripe fruit because that will help your plant deal with the stress of the heat that's coming. They're not going to have to worry about taking care of the tomatoes that are on there. This is ag fabric or garden mesh. There is not a lot of shade here, but you could double or triple it over if you're in a pinch and you have a lot of that, and that will provide some shade. You can also use um, sheer curtains. You could use blankets that let some light in. At this point, to be honest with you, even if you put something up that gave 100% shade to your tomatoes, they would survive a good four or five days with the shade. They're going to do perfectly fine, but you'll help keep the temperature a good 10, sometimes 15 degrees cooler under your shade cloth and your tomatoes may not kick into that physiological response of dealing with the high heat. So I have to get rid of all those tomatoes. So let me harvest everything and then get the shade cloth set up. So a lot of people ask me, how do I keep a garden this large watered? Well, here in Maryland Zone 7, we get these storms all the time. And we may get one, two, three inches of water dumped within an hour, sometimes four or five inches. So watering isn't a huge issue. And our heat again here stays around maybe five or seven days and we get some cooler periods in the 80s and the heat comes back. But where the heat just beats down on your garden, you're gonna have to set up something a little more elaborate with the shade cloth, but I just wanted to show you what it is, how you use it, and how you can take care of uh, your tomatoes when the heat starts rolling right, so in. Let's go over the tips real quick. First tip, pick all the tomatoes you can. Even if some of them aren't quite ripe, you can just let them ripen inside. And we've been dealing with this rain as I showed you. This is how much we, rain we got. Let's see if I can show you. In about an hour's time. Sometimes it's good to rain and you think it's enough. That's almost enough water, but you still want to give your tomatoes on the days that's breaking into the 90s one to two inches of water, almost daily in some cases. And you can see right in there that's not mulch. We'll get that to that in a second. So tip number one, take off as many tomatoes as you can. Now my shade cloth is was actually smaller than I thought because I used half of it. I cut it in half when I was shading off my seed transplants. So I originally wanted to cover this space because I have to do videos on these tomatoes and I wanted to protect them. But the shade cloth wasn't big enough. Also in my zone, I don't necessarily need it. It would make a difference. So I decided to shade off the tomatoes that are in my grow off contest that I have with Jess from Roots and Refuge and Kim from Cali Kim. The whole key to this is to know how your sun tracks and let me go to the other side and I'm going to show you how the sun tracks. So it comes up over to the left and then it goes behind the shade cloth all the way around and then the sun stays up there. That's the major sun. That's the late morning early afternoon sun. So you want to set up your shade cloth really so that it comes out about two feet past where your tomatoes are on the side where the sun isn't really going to sit. So the sun comes up, comes over here, early morning sun, that's fine, it can get that sun. Comes around here, now we're starting to get the intense sun. You really want your shade cloth to come out a good three or four feet so that the sun's not getting in there or have enough that it drops down and will provide protection for your tomato plants. And again, Maryland Zone 7, you may or may not need to use this. It's great temporarily just to put it up. Also in Maryland Zone 7 or any place, you could use, and in case you're interested, if you want to subscribe, I'll be showing you how I turn this into cucumber tomato salad, a simple recipe. I'm going to be making spaghetti sauce, again, simple recipe. And I'm going to jar these, not can them, because they're going to go in the refrigerator. All the cherry tomatoes are going to go in with an olive oil basil mix 
jarred, put in the refrigerator. It's a great way to easily take care of all your produce and have something great to eat over the week. A fabric like this, even if you block the sun out for four or five days, it's not going to hurt your tomato plants. And you just got to decide what you want to do. Now, when you come down here, it's all mulch. So that would be really the third tip is to really use mulch. Tomato roots go straight into the ground. They look for deeper water and then they spread out across the ground. By putting mulch down, you're going to keep that consistent water you're going to keep water more consistently on the top of your soil. Your roots will be able to pull it in regularly and it's going to stop a lot of your fruit from splitting and it's also going to help prevent blossom end rot from starting. Shade cloth can really make a difference in allowing your tomatoes to battle the high heat. And if you're in areas where you're getting four, six weeks of 9,500 degree temperature, shade cloth will really make a difference and you'll extend your growing season because it's like being at the beach. When it's really hot and then you go under your umbrella or your shaded space, it can be 10, 15, degree, 10, 15 degrees cooler under there and you appreciate it. Your tomato plants are going to appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the video. It gives you some ideas of how to manage high temperatures that come in and it's really all based on how long they hang around what you might need to do in your garden. Don't forget to water regularly. Mulch will make a difference. Shade cloth will make a difference and pick off all of your fruit that's starting to ripen, your plants will appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Check out my seed shop, please, at therustedgarden.com.